Josie, we're going to be talking about how we are going to combine different primary lessons, yes. such as misting, exercise, and play. Yes. But I think we can focus right now on misting. Yes, and it's a very big topic, so there's definitely quite a lot of things to say about it. And it is one of our primary lessons that we really insist on, especially when the birds reach the fourth stage of their early parrot education. It is part of their daily routine. Uh, we try to emphasize that every morning in our nursery. Right. When they're very young, obviously, we wouldn't be spraying them. No, usually when they're very young in the stages prior to that, they might at worst get the wet towel around their feathers. Yes. This is when the feathers are actually emerging, so mm -hmm. this is definitely going to help with the molting process. Mm -hmm. But when they start to comfortably perch, and when they're uh, actually participating to the, the flock activities in the morning, then this is when the misting will gradually start to, to be more uh, direct. Right. Um, it's very important to mention as well that uh, we missed ourselves as well, and that's okay, along with the other birds in the nursery, and uh, we try and make this a very fun activity. Mm -hmm. And they usually at first are a little bit uh, hesitant, but when they see their flock mentors, the older birds, you know, the ones that they look up to, actually get excited with this and vocalize and start to move around, and mm -hmm. then, then usually the babies are more inclined to actually participate and they don't become as shy. Right. It, uh, it's a great exercise for them, Ms. Yes. and it's also a great occupational therapy yes. to prevent boredom, right? Very important. We're always trying to find ways to prevent boredom with mm -hmm. uh, toys, which mm -hmm. are important as well, and foraging, but, but definitely misting is a very large part of a day's activity mm -hmm. because it will lead to preening, which right. we'll discuss a little bit further on, but it's definitely a very important part of their day. Right, and this will continue when they go to the new caretaker. Yes, hopefully this continues when they go to the new caretaker and it becomes part of their routine. Mm -hmm. It might not be possible every single morning that the caretaker either takes a shower with their birds, birds when they're out on a shower perch, or maybe they get a little preen in the morning, uh, misting a, a session with hot water in a misting bottle. But hopefully this is something that uh, can become part of the daily activities and then the birds actually look forward to it. It's a right. good way to wake up in the morning. <laughs> it's also good when you're going to train the fledgling, right? Yes. You get them misted, you get them exercise, all of that. And That's more of a strategy. First. This yeah. is really a strategy that we use or else birds would be flying around everywhere. So we usually try and make them flap and get that energy out mm -hmm. before we actually do any kind of education. This is very, very important because uh, also uh, teaches the birds how to flap the wings a lot more. And because most of the fledgling at this age are not yet uh, flight feather groomed, then it's very important that we find a way to make them exercise as much as possible right. without them flying into walls because we don't have the large outdoor aviaries where we can bring our fledglings to at all times for this purpose. Mm -hmm. um, along with misting, I think it's really important that we talk about water hygiene in the misting bottles. Uh, it's very important to know where the water that it's safe water because yes. the water they might be drinking it it might be Absolutely. going into the nares. Um, it should be hot water that we put in. Yes, because we don't want them. Cool water is a little bit uh, uh, shocking for them. Right. They might not enjoy it. And even if it's very warm when we put it in the bottle, when we're misting it, it reaches them. It's That's not true. really warm anymore. Right. No. Uh, the misting bottles themselves uh, have to be disinfected. They should be disinfected at least once a week. At least once a week. And the bottle should be labeled, and that bottle should not be used for any other purpose. No, not at all. There's a lot of water conditioners, too, that uh, some caretakers like to add to their water. There's natural ingredients that we can add to the water as well. There's the aloe vera. There's also OxyFresh Pet Gel that is recommended by numerous veterinarians. There's uh, bathing conditioners, uh, various uh, safe ingredients that, that can be added, but also just LT water, you know, yes. safe water. Uh, the birds drink this water when they get into the heavy misting session. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to realize that they're going to be ingesting sometimes uh, by preening and also within the activity. Yeah. So we have to make sure what we're putting in there is safe for sure. Right. Yeah. And along with the, the water hygiene, it's really important that there's no, like we said, no bacteria. It can cause sinusitis. Yes. And uh, as well, when we're spraying, it's important that we're not spraying right into the nares. No, that's insulting. And it, it's not nice to do that. Yeah. And I think that we have to put ourselves in the bird's position when we're spraying ourselves. We like it to be like a yeah, nice rainfall mist. Like a nice over. rainfall. And it, it's very important. Most caretakers that try to educate their birds that are not that are very reluctant to being misted, mm -hmm. forget to put the hot, warm water. Mm -hmm. They forget that the birds should be misted and it should be in brumasse. Mm -hmm. We call that in French brumasse because it's a very, very fine mm -hmm. particle. This is very important because if it's a spray, 
uh, jet, you know, then it's not very pleasurable and the birds are going to take it more as an offensive action right. instead of it being part of something that we're doing together to have fun, right. for sure. Uh, sometimes the birds are reluctant to it at first and we may just miss them very high up so that it falls like an umbrella over them and over ourselves and then we just look at the particles and, and it awakens our senses and then it slowly awakens their senses and usually a few minutes later they're less reluctant and want to participate. Additional considerations that must be respected when we're misting birds is definitely the importance of providing our birds with a basking opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, we find that very important because we often are in a winter season in Canada and it might be a little cooler uh, in our facility for sure we have heating but it, nonetheless the birds uh, like to mist and to be misted and then preen if they are offered the opportunity to then rest or preen themselves under a basking light. Right. And this is important. It is. There's some considerations we need to take into with yes. uh, the basking light itself. Mm -hmm. One is we have to make sure that it's not uh, Teflon coated. Yes, that so, would be toxic uh, for birds. Exactly. For sure. So a basking uh, fixture such as this wire fixture would serve its purpose very well. Yes. Another uh, issue that we have to be very careful of is the cord, obviously, to make sure that the bird doesn't right. have access to the cord or to the fixture itself. Yes, very important. Yeah. And additional to that, we must emphasize here that this is not a full spectrum lighting bulb that we have inside of the fixture. This is more of a uh, basking light, mm -hmm. so a very good recommendation that we make for bird caretakers is to use the lamps that are meant for turtle basking. We have an exoteric division that makes a fabulous one, it's called a swamp cloak. Mm -hmm. And what I really like about that lamp too is that you can actually come in and mist very close to this basking light without it having to burst because it's not something you want to do with a hot lamp. Right. So I definitely feel that this is a good investment to set up with uh, a basking light mm -hmm. somewhere. Usually people don't usually miss birds in their cages unless you have a really big cage because the birds will be flapping mm -hmm. and then they could get injured. Mm -hmm. So this can be set up close to the activity tree. Uh, it can be uh, also on top of the cage, that's fine too. But then definitely having a safe setup to make sure that the birds don't eat the electrical cord That's right. or that they don't get too close to the basking light. Right. Now, of course, this is not something that we want our birds to be exposed to directly without having any way of getting away from it. We don't want them to overheat either under this basking light. Right. It doesn't have to be that hot either. It, it's a little bit, I think, psychologi psychologically a little bit soothing mm -hmm. just to be under this, uh, this lamp to be preening. You had mentioned that um, in, in the winter time we would be using the basking light, but some people are, tend to be a little bit reluctant maybe to, to, uh, to, to mist, mist. Uh, in the winter time because yes. of maybe their, their fear of drafts, but that is actually a really important time to mist. It's very are, important because we have a cold climate, so we have a lot of electrical heating. Exactly, and it's very dry. It's very dry. It's dry for ourselves as well, our respiratory tract. Sometimes our nose get a little bit dry. So for sure, these birds need to be misted, especially during the winter. But we have to be very careful to minimize the exposure to drafts and to the cold weather afterwards, for sure. You know, we definitely need to have some kind of warmth around our pruning activity just to make sure, our misting activity, just to make sure that the birds don't feel any discomfort. For sure. Misting and providing a basking light uh, encourages preening. Yes. And although preening is instinctive, it has to still be learned. It must be learned. And whether that is by the parents, if they are a parent raising their chicks and fledglings, or whether this is by ourselves as the mentors, or uh, done by another fledgling that's a little bit older, or a clutch mate, because they've learned to preen each other in the first stage of early parent mm -hmm. education, which is basically right after the onset of the feather emerging from the sheep. So it's very, very young. And it's one that we need to keep the birds very close to each other <clears throat> in all of the early parent educational stages, because especially the first through the fifth stage, because this is where the birds are going to be more likely preening each other. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very important. And I think that we use the misting as a strategy in the basking light in order to make sure that this learned behavior becomes a very, very a skilled one, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, there's a lot of people questioning all the time their birds that develop uh, abnormal feather damaging behaviors, and, and we're very concerned about that. And we think that perhaps in the past, if we were not uh, educating our birds to preening properly, then perhaps it, it must have contributed 
mm -hmm. to some of the feather damaging behaviors that we see. Right. A bird that's not inclined to mist or preen, it can be an indication of a health concern. Definitely, especially the birds that you have in your care. I mean, we all know the birds that really love to get misted, and then we also know the birds that are a little reluctant at first when the automatic water system goes into our breeding rooms. There's always a few birds that we know in our Amazon room. There's some of the older birds that they're just waiting for everybody else to get excited to actually go into the misting. But uh, in our babies, it's something that's going to be learned for sure. And of course, we don't want to waken them uh, with, <laughs> with a misting bottle. We have to make sure that they're ready for this activity. But uh, definitely a bird that would not be preening as such that's in our care or in the caretaker's uh, family for some time and that's usually engaged in this activity would definitely be an indicator that something's going on. Mm -hmm. Either the environment is not safe enough for him to be doing this because obviously he's not being distracted by anything else but his feathers, putting his head back, preening on one foot usually because he needs quite a lot of agility and coordination and he needs to be very uh, physically fit in order to do this. For definitely, it's, it's a very good barometer for us, for sure. As a test trial feeding facility, uh, feather structure is really important at Harry because it is an indicator of the nutritional value of the food. Very important that you mentioned that, Suzanne, because uh, we take a lot of weights and we make sure that the bird's crops are having the right motility, mm -hmm. and this is very important for the nutritional value of our food and then the digestive enzymes and all the other properties, but definitely we usually wait till our birds have reached um, full feathering in order to assure that the lot that we were testing had the complete amino acid profile and had enough vitamin E in order for the feather to emerge from the shaft easily. Um, the fact that we missed our birds definitely ensures that this variable is not a problem. Mm -hmm. So we're therefore concentrating all our efforts to make sure that uh, the bird's feather quality is optimal. This is very important as well because these birds uh, might not be in our care or they may stay in our colony for the rest of their lives, but we want to equip them with the perfect preening skills. Especially if, unfortunately for them, they may be the only bird in a household doesn't mean that their lives won't be enriched, but they definitely need to learn how to preen. The caretaker will always have uh, the possibility to uh, actually participate in that, right? We know that's important. But uh, during the peak uh, hormonal uh, seasons, usually we try to avoid preening our birds a little bit. So it's important that they learn how to do it themselves, for sure. A couple of other considerations that we have to take note of mm -hmm. uh, with preening are um, the stability of the perch. Yes. Uh, the, it's important that the bird feels secure on the perch, that the nails are not groomed to, uh, they just be groomed lightly. Just lightly. Not, yeah. In order for the bird to have the assurance. Right. Uh, this is important during the misting and bathing activity as well. Right. Or else they're not as likely to flap their feathers and really get into that exercise mode. But during the preening, for sure, because usually preening requires them to be standing on one foot. Right. So definitely, if the other foot is not uh, has not the assurance that it's not going to slip off, then the birds are most likely just going to hang there on their perch and feel miserable. Right. When they're younger, we put the birds, uh, although it's not as practical, we sometimes put the birds on cotton perches mm -hmm. or natural branches. Mm -hmm. This is to ensure that the birds don't slip off. Right. And usually uh, on a perch. And we mentioned that, Suzanne, especially with the large macaws. Right. On the floor, it wouldn't work. <laughs> no, they need to wiggle their tail and they need to, when, especially when they're, they're preening, they like to really be very active and, and uh, contortionists. And if they're stuck on the bottom of the floor, first of all, they're not going to feel very secure there either. They need to be perched up a little bit higher in order to feel safe. Mm -hmm. They want to be right up there on the top of the canopy for sure. To further the knowledge of the primary lessons of misting, and preening, we can take it one more step further and of course prepare these birds for their life as companions in a family, home, where perhaps the bird will be introduced to the shower. Mm -hmm. So if, if time permits and this is something that we can do additional with our birds before they leave our care, then this is always really fun to do. Ideally, of course, Suzanne, with the concerns with the cotton row perch, if the bird is older and capable of perching on something else, that yes. there's alternatives to this. Yes, there's the commercially available shower perch, which is PVC. Maybe yes. PVC. It has suction cups. 
But you wouldn't use that for a younger uh, Not bird. for a younger bird because they might fall off it. So yes. this is something we would definitely use by the stage five okay. of our early parrot education where the bird is very confident. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely something that we recommend to be part of the original package that the people buy along with the the sleeping cage along with the uh, scale for weighing their bird. It's a very important uh, accessory to have in order to make sure that the caretakers will continue this fun and daily activity. Mm -hmm. um, we have here the blow dryer now. There's a few concerns with the blow dryer. Well, first of all, it definitely should not be Teflon. No. <laughs> and there's a lot of things on the market right now. It's actually kind of hard to find one without Teflon. Yes. yes. Uh, and we wouldn't want to be too close to them. Not too close. Yeah. Not too warm. Not too warm. Not too cool. Not too cool. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, if we test it on ourselves and get a, you know get to have this activity with our birds, usually it's a lot less stressful as well because yeah. of the noise that is associated with the air blower. Right. It's not like the rotary tool where we do have soundless ones or practically soundless ones. I've never come across a hair blower that's that silent. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely important. Although in this photo we have the mitochondria on the perch, it can be done on the floor. It's actually more fun on the, on the floor because usually when we're blow drying their feathers and we're usually not expecting them to be printing at the same time because this is a whole bunch of fun. They can move around quite a lot more if they're spinning on the floor and they're getting excited with us that way. Whereas if they're on a perch, it's kind of limiting their movement. So here, Suzanne, we wanted to share how a combination of primary lessons can be really, really time efficient and, and very fun for our birds. Obviously, the metric conures are in a stage six where they're very comfortable and they've uh, mastered several skills and have enjoyed and learned how to play with us for a while now. Right. Their dexterity is excellent. Absolutely. It's important to note that their, their um, nails, nails are still a little bit sharp because yeah. we still keep them a little bit sharp. We don't want to take that confidence away from the birds. Mm -hmm. uh, we've noticed over the years that they can become biters if we start grooming the nails too uh, short. And it's very important to mention as well that we're using this bungee rope and playing with the bungee rope with the birds. Uh, often this bungee rope is sold and attached to the side of the cage or attached to the canopy play activity center but it also is very practical to take it off from the cage and actually play with the birds and with our eye contact and our vocal praises we excite the bird and encourage them to climb up and down right. at the same time as we're missing them. Right. I think we should. Yeah, I think we should also point out that this was taken in our photo studio, which is yes. unfamiliar territory for these birds. <laughs> and they had to walk through all of our uh, colony, right. our, our indoor aviary, to get to this photo studio. So the birds were, for the first time, now introduced to a, a large collection of birds, and they were very loud. And so, despite this, they were not intimidated. Mm -hmm. And for us, this is an accomplishment because we are more assured that when they leave our care and they wind up in a new environment, then they will still be able to perform and enjoy these skills. Uh, also, what we uh, like to write on these primary lessons uh, throughout the educational program that you will be seeing in the second volume is what is being accomplished here. Here we have climbing, wing flapping, and missing opportunity all going on at the same time. All going on and all very vital for the longevity of these birds helped and also uh, the, the fact that, that they will be climbing will definitely be contributing to their exercise program. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're wing flapping a lot while they're being misting is very important because they will develop the pectoral mm -hmm. muscles, which is very important at this stage because they are still fledglings. And, and this is a one opportunity in their lifetime to develop a very healthy pectoral mass, which can be a lifesaver should they get uh, sick one day and have to be hospitalized and we need to give them injection intramuscularly, or even for the fact that they will be flying, even if their flight is controlled, they need to learn how to create this uh, very healthy pectoral muscle. The missing opportunity is always so much more important and fun when it is done with play. Right. And so obviously this is a photo, but often in our nursery we will add music to this, which is very, very important. And so there we would be uh, adding an enrichment to this primary lesson in order to make this a fun and efficient uh, exercise for our birds.